what we will be making is chocolate truffles. Chocolate truffles are like, they seem way more mysterious than they are. You're going to see exactly how easy they are to make. By learning how to make chocolate truffles, you also learn how to make a chocolate ganache, which you can use on desserts. You can use it in cakes. You can pipe it into molds and then pop it out of those molds later and have something really fancy. And you're also going to learn how we can flavor those truffles. So if you want peppermint chocolate truffles, you can do that. We're going to do vanilla in our chocolate truffles tonight. I made a batch up earlier because there is a cooling step. So it takes a little while and I want to make sure we move through this quickly. So my batch earlier had vanilla just to mix things up. So I don't have like 50 vanilla chocolate truffles. I'm also going to use a little bit of uh, orange blossom extract when I make my truffles tonight. It's the same exact process. We're going to go through that together. And then by the end of this, you're going to have some ganache chilling in the fridge that will be turned into chocolate truffles, but you will have seen every step of the process for how to make your own chocolate truffles. Let's get cooking. The recipe is pretty easy. We've got eight ounces of a dark chocolate. I recommend 60% plus cocoa. We're going to use two thirds cup of heavy cream. I'm going to measure that in just a second. We need one tablespoon of butter. And what that does is it helps make our chocolate truffles just a little smoother and creamier when they're all done. Then we're going to need a little vanilla extract. And I'm actually going to use some orange blossom water instead to see what that's like because I have a bunch of vanilla ones waiting in the fridge already. You can kind of use whatever you like for this. I'm going to be using some of them in sprinkles and some of them in cocoa powder. And we're going to roll those truffles in that to create a coating so it doesn't make your fingers really messy. So the first step here is going to actually be prepping the pan that our ganache, which turns into our truffles, is going to cool in. And then we're going to line it with parchment paper so it's really easy to remove our chocolate later. I recommended beforehand using an eight inch by eight inch pan. You can also use a bread pan, either works. Um, I'm actually experimenting with the bread pan right now because the smaller size might make it easier to portion up later. But you can use whatever. Um, it helps us to cut out the shape so there's less scooping later on. So these are parchment paper. Now you can just shove the parchment paper down to make it fit. Another thing you can do is if you put the parchment paper on top of your pan, and you can kind of do this for any pan, find where the corners are and just do rough cuts with some kitchen shears. And this is gonna allow it to fold a lot better. The easiest thing in the world, those little cuts help. And then, so this is why in the extra section for slightly useful items, I mentioned binder clips. So you'll notice this paper isn't staying down very well, right? If you use these little binder clips, you can pinch the edge of your pan and it holds the paper in place for you. And you can do that with just about any recipe that needs a lining for a pan, whether it's aluminum foil or whether it's parchment paper if you're making a cake or a bread or if you're making truffles. These little binder clips are remarkably helpful at keeping things in place. Next up, we're going to chop up all of our chocolate. We want as close to eight ounces as you can get. If you have to go half as much, maybe you've only got one four ounce bar, you can just half the rest of the recipe and it'll be fine. And one thing to look out for, so I've got bar chocolate here and it even says premium baking on top. You want to be able to use a baking chocolate when you're doing this rather than something like chocolate chips or a standard like Hershey's bar because both of those foods, especially chocolate chips, have extra things in them that make them not set quite as well in terms of chocolate. So chocolate chips have a slight coating on them that keeps them from getting to a really smooth consistency. So you can melt them down, definitely, but you'll never get that smooth, glossy look and texture that you would get from a regular baking chocolate. Uh, sometimes baking chocolate is also sold in wafers. 
So you can look for those as well. A few um, brands that I like that I recommend is um, Ghirardelli is pretty solid. There's another brand called Guitard, which has really phenomenal baking chocolate. And then there's some really generic brands as well that have surprisingly good chocolates. I think one of them is literally just called Baker's Chocolate. Might have some from them. I think I use it a lot. This is this is what the logo for Guitard looks like. So if you ever see that logo, their chocolate's very good. So with our chocolate, we're just going to roughly chop this up so that when we heat it up later, it just heats with a little less energy. If you have a really big baking bar, uh, these cuts might be a little harder to make just because you're probably using big chunks of chocolate that are fairly thick. I'm using my pinch grip, right? So I have lots of control over here. And then I'm putting my other hand on top of the spine. So I have lots of control and I'm sort of doing a slow rock chop, but I can have force on both hands. It is important that these fingers are up, not down, because there's a big pile of chocolate here. If I lose control of the knife or something slides, I don't want my fingers falling underneath that blade. So fingers up, and then it's almost like you're doing a rock chop. So I'll show you what kind of size we're aiming for. That's probably on the bigger side, but it's not a problem. So we're not, we're not um, turning this into a powder. We're just getting them into smallish chunks so that we increase our surface area because what we're going to do after this is we're going to heat up our heavy cream on the stove. And if you don't have a saucepan, you can use a microwave to do this. Uh, you just need to keep an eye on the heavy cream so you don't accidentally burn it. Because burning dairy in a microwave uh, can happen very quickly. Uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to pour that hot cream over our chocolate and let it sit for a few minutes so that everything just kind of melts from the residual heat of the cream. So chocolate's pretty chumped. There's some larger chunks. Just place this chocolate into a medium sized bowl. I'm going to use uh, you will notice on a lot of my calls that I use what's called a bench scraper a lot. They're super cheap. I highly recommend picking it up. Heavy cream, two thirds cup. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to throw that into a pot on the stove and then heat it up until it's just barely boiling. And then we're going to add it back into the bowl where our chocolate is sitting. We're gonna turn this on and we don't need the heat to be very high for this because uh, cream can actually scorch, which means burn pretty quickly sometimes if your heat's too high. So you can already see, or maybe it's a little hard to see, but you can see how hot the side of the pan is and we've already got a little bit of sizzle when I stir. So we're already almost at heat for this. So it's pretty quick. We just want this to be just under boiling. So you're gonna see bubbling around the edges. And when you pull a spatula through the center, you'll actually see a slight trail loop. So right now, when I do this, the cream fills in immediately right behind my spatula. When the cream is heated up a little bit more, there's actually just gonna be a slight delay when it fills in behind it. You see right on some of these, there's just a slight delay before that space fills in. And that's what we're looking for. And we're seeing that this is bubbling and boiling all over. So that's already done. Pour our cream into the chocolate. And we're going to let this sit for about five minutes. Right now is, if you're using the butter, which I highly recommend, this is when you add your butter as well. So you want your butter to be room temperature. If it's not room temperature, uh, then leave it out for a few minutes to warm up so that it's not a cold thing chilling the rest of your mix. But that's literally all we're doing right now. We're just letting the hot cream sit with the chocolate for five minutes. At the end of five minutes, we're going to 
add our flavorings. So either vanilla extract or orange blossom water, or you could use peppermint extract or almond extract. Or if you wanted these to be really ridiculously chocolatey, you could even use chocolate extract in your chocolate and just make it super rich. But that's how you change up the flavor profiles. And it's the same volume for each one. So half a teaspoon of vanilla extract or half a teaspoon of orange blossom water. This has been sitting for about five minutes now. Right now I'm going to add my orange blossom water. So half a teaspoon. Add that in. And then all we do is stir. We stir until everything is combined. And you can see how much that chocolate melted just from sitting in that heavy cream. And it will look at first like it's not going to combine. Just keep going. And everything's going to come together and you're going to get this really beautiful, smooth mixture. Another tip when you're stirring stuff and you like say so you need to get all around those edges, instead of always moving your arm to get it, one thing that helps a lot is move the bowl while keeping your, your utensil arm in a fairly consistent place. So if I need to get more of the bowl, I can turn both at the same time and it makes life a bit easier. Right now I'm doing kind of a figure eight pattern with this to improve my mixing. Going around in a circle isn't actually a very effective way to mix things. If you do a figure eight or a Z shape, it actually mixes things even more effectively. Mine is about there. And I wanted to show you how smooth this looks and shiny. Every time you hear someone mention chocolate ganache, this is exactly what they made. Heavy cream, maybe a little bit of butter, a bunch of chocolate. They melted the chocolate. That's it. You could put this in a piping bag and add it to other foods. You can let it chill a little bit so that it's got a little more structure to it, but then make it a layer in a cake. You could do all sorts of stuff. Like I mentioned before, you could get little silicone candy molds and add this to the molds and then chill it. And then you have these little shaped uh, chocolate ganache balls, AKA chocolate truffles. So what we're gonna do from here, now that we've got this beautiful ganache, we're going to add it into our pan so that we can chill this in the fridge. Typically, you need to let this sit for one to two hours for it to chill and firm up enough for us to get the balls that we want. Now, if, you, if you're watching this late at night, or Adriana, I know you're out on the East Coast, if you want to be able to go to bed soon, totally fine. Let it chill overnight and you can do it anytime tomorrow. It doesn't hurt anything to wait a day. You can even wait potentially up to three days of this sitting in the fridge and firming up before you make your truffles. So if you want a dessert that's easy to make ahead, make chocolate truffles. If Don't feel limited that, oh, I'm not going to be available in two hours from now. Just put that in our pan. We're gonna put something on top of the chocolate. So I'm gonna use a little saran wrap. If you aren't using saran wrap with your food, you can just use a little more parchment paper. And it's just to remove the ability for oxygen to get to the top of our chocolate quite so readily. We're just gonna lightly press it down. Probably good if I show you. We're gonna lightly press it down onto the chocolate while we chill it. We don't need to be particular with this. This is what it looks like. Throw that in the fridge real quick and get out the chocolate that I prepped earlier today. This is the chocolate that we'll keep moving steps on. So we've got our chocolate here. This has been in the fridge for a few hours. I made this this afternoon. And then because we put this in our parchment paper, that's right out really easily. We don't even need to clean our pan. So again, 
We make cooking fun and easy by making cleanup easier too. So if we want five cuts on this side, I think if we do center and then two more cuts on this, basically thirds, right? Basically we're aiming for things that are fairly cubish. So as long as your cuts are fairly cubish, it makes life a little easier. And if you use a really shallow pan, so when I made this earlier this week, I used a much bigger pan and it made for really shallow chocolate, totally fine. What we'll do in a moment is just a little more handwork to form it into a ball. So we've got our chocolate all sliced up here. I'm gonna take that ring off because we've got a couple options for what happens next here. We got this beautiful chocolate Make sure if any parchment paper is stuck on the bottom that you peel it off. You don't want to eat that. But what we can do with these is we have a couple options available to us. One, so we can take a bunch of sprinkles. So I just threw some in a little container already. And you can just set it in the container and kind of press it into whatever coating that you want. So here I'm just using some regular sprinkles. Pressing it in there and you've got a sprinkle coated truffle, right? If you warm them up a little bit in your hands, they'll stick a little bit better. So I've got a bunch of cocoa powder that's just in a container here. And you can just place your uh, truffle in there and you'll see how much easier the cocoa powder coats your truffle, it coats it really easily. And that's a totally coated truffle. You can leave them in squares like this and that's totally fine. Like no one's gonna call you out on a truffle that's a square. This is totally optional, but if you want them to look like spheres, you gotta put them in your hand and roll them around a little bit. And what's gonna happen is the heat of your hand is going to melt the chocolate a little bit. And you'll see your hands get really messy. So make sure you're not touching any white linens when you're doing this. And you get to roll it around and this gives you this, you can see how slick and wet that surface is, but it's a much more rounded shape now. So you can take this and if I toss this into the sprinkles now, it's going to get coated a lot more easily because it's, it had that little bit of heat from my hands. And you can press it into the sprinkles and really get it in there. You can do that. Another option, I'm gonna take three of these a good bit of space in here still. Put the cover on, and I'm just gonna shake it. Shaking the coat, and this will also help knock down some of the corners. It doesn't take much. Whew, a lot of powder flying out of there. So now what we've got is what looks kind of like a, a pebble almost because we've knocked down those other corners on here. So these are just a few different ways you can do up your truffles. You can do the same thing with the sprinkles. And you've got a really well coated chocolate truffle. Now you could do this with toasted nuts. You could do this with whatever kind of sprinkles you like. You could use toasted coconut. So that's it. You have the option of these cubes that you just roll into your coatings uh, and whether it's sprinkles, which might need a little bit of help, cocoa powder, which sticks without any effort or if you roll them around in your hand to make them stickier or a little rounder. Or the other option is you just throw them in the containers and toss it around. You have all these different options for how you can prep your truffles, but they're going to be delicious no matter what.